Chapter 7, problems 13 through 23. Number 13, the population of IQ scores forms forms a normal distribution with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation equal to 15. What is the probability of obtaining the sample greater than a mean equal to 97? So a probability statement is as follows. The probability of obtaining a sample mean that is greater than 97. Okay, so we're going to sketch our distribution and then um, solve for standard error, which is a value needed to solve this problem. So we begin by sketching our distribution. We have the mean in the center, which is 100. The score of 97 would be our sample mean, I should clarify, sample mean of 97 would be to the left of the distribution, distribution mean. Make this a little bit smaller. Okay, and then we're saying that the probability of a sample mean that is greater than 97, so that's this whole shaded area here. And from what we had learned, this area would represent the body of the distribution. Body. Okay, so what we need to do next is convert that sample mean into a z-score. In order to do so, we're first going to need to calculate our standard error of the mean. Standard error of the mean is standard deviation over square root of n, which is equal to 15 over the square root of 9, right? We have 9 people in this sample. So that becomes 15 over 3, and we get a standard error equal to 5. Now that we have that value, we can calculate our z-score. So z is equal to the mean minus the mean of the sample minus the population mean over the standard error of the mean. When we replace variables, z is equal to 97, 97 minus 100 divided by 5. So in our calculators, 97 minus 100 divided by 5 gives us a z-score equal to negative 0 0.60, which should make sense since we're on the left of the distribution. Whoops, didn't mean that. So um, we, we have, let me write that a little bit better. So negative 0.67, meaning that the sample mean of 97 is 0.67 standard error units below the mean. Now our task is to find the probability of obtaining a score, or excuse me, a sample mean greater than 97. So we're going to need to utilize our unit normal table. And I'm just going to rewrite my probability statement down here so we can see it a little bit better. So the probability of obtaining a sample mean greater than 97, which is the same as saying the probability of a z-score greater than negative 0 0.60. So we're going to use our unit normal table, enter it using the z-score of 0 0.60, and report the body. Okay, so here's our z-score um, distribution. We're going to go one more page over. Um, 0 0.6. 0 0.6 is right here. And again, the area in the body is the area of interest. So that's 0.7. Two five seven. So we're going to use that um, to answer this question. So we just um, found the proportion, right, which was 0 0.7, 0 0.7257, which is the same as there's a 72.57 percent chance that if we randomly selected a sample of n equal nine that the sample average or sample mean would be greater than 97. In other words, um, individuals would have an average IQ greater than 97. There's a 72.57% chance that that value would be greater than 97. All right, similarly, the next one is for a sample equal to 25. What is the probability? So again, our statement is 
probability of obtaining a sample mean greater than 97, similar as the last one. But now the sample size has changed. So we should consider the effects of um, that increase in sample size on the z-score. So we've learned that as n increases, standard error decreases, and z-score increases. So let's see if mathematically that proves to be true. We have our distribution. Again, um, 97 is the sample mean of interest. 100 is the population mean. We're still talking about the body of the distribution. So all of this area here, right? Again, that's the body. Now we need to calculate a z-score, but to do so, we're going to need our standard error of the mean. Our standard error is equal to the standard deviation, which is 15, over the square root of n. So standard error of the mean is equal to 15 over the square root of 25. Standard error of the mean is equal to 15 divided by 5, and we get 3. So again, um, sample size increase, standard error decreased. Let's see what it means for our z-score. So z is equal to our sample mean of 97 minus the population mean of 100 divide by 3. This is 3 over 3 gives us a z-score of negative 1, negative 1. So given that the sample size has increased to 25, now that means that the sample mean of 97 is one whole standard error units below the mean. So now we're going to utilize our unit normal table to answer our probability statement, and I'll rewrite it again here. The probability of obtaining the sample mean greater than 97, when our sample is, is equal to 25, is the same as the probability of a, obtaining a z-score greater than negative 1.00. So let's use our unit normal table to answer this question. Okay, so here's our unit normal table. 1, a z-score of 1 is here. The area in the body is 0.8413. Okay, so the value that we found was 0.8413, or there's an 84.13% chance that if we randomly selected a sample equal to 25 individuals, their IQ score, their average IQ score, would be greater than 97. So again, seeing the effects of increasing your sample size. Sample size increased from 9 to 25. Our standard error decreased from 5 to 3. And therefore, our z-score increased from negative 0.6 to negative 1. Number 15, a normal distribution has a mean of 54 and a standard deviation equal to 6. What is the probability, probability of randomly selecting a score less than x equal to 51? A little caution here. Um, here we're talking about a score. So the process will be similar to what we did in the previous chapter. So make sure that you're conscientious of whether or not they're talking about a score or a sample mean. In this case, since we're talking about a, sam um, a score in the distribution, again, let's begin by drawing our distribution or sketch. We have the mean in the center, which is 54. A score of 51 is to the left, so we'll just plot 51 here. That's my x value. And want to know um, what's the probability of obtaining an x value of 51 or less. Okay, so probability of x less than 51. Again, since this is an x value, I can just use my z is equal to x minus mu divided by standard deviation. Because we're not using a sample mean, there's no purpose of calculating standard error of the mean. We just need to recognize we're working with scores in the distribution, so we simply replace variables. So z is equal to 51 minus 54 divided by our standard deviation of 6. In your calculators, 51 minus 54 divided by 6 gives us negative 0.5. So again, a score of 51 is half a standard deviation unit below the mean. And now we recognize because it said less than, less than, um, we're going to focus on the tail in our unit normal table. So again, this can be rewritten as probability of a z-score less than negative 0.5. OK, 
Okay, so we're going to use our unit normal table to finish this problem. In our unit normal table, we enter it using the z-score, it's 0.5. And again, the area of interest in this case, since it was less than a, and then a, a negative z-score or a score below the mean, we're interested in the tail. So it's 0.3085. Okay, so we would answer this question as um, the value we found in our unit normal table of 0.3085. Or there's a 30.85% chance that if we selected um, a score from this distribution, that score would be less than 51. Using the same information from the previous um, item, continuing 15, 15b, so again we're still working with the normal distribution that has a mean of 54 and a standard deviation equal to 6. b, what is the probability of selecting a sample? Notice the difference. A sample of n equal 4 scores with a mean less than 51, so probability of m less than 51. Again, we're going to convert our score into um, a z-score, but first let's draw our distribution. We have the mean of 54, we have our sample mean of 51, and we're still talking about less than that value. So it's still going to be the tail. And the extra step we have to attend to in this, this example is that we need to calculate our standard error of the mean because we're looking at a distribution of sample means, no longer working with just x values. So our standard error of the mean is equal to the standard deviation over the square root of n. Standard error of the mean is equal to our standard deviation of 6 over the square root of 4. So standard error of the mean is equal to 6 divided by 2, which gives us 3. Using that information, we can calculate our z-score, which is m minus mu divided by standard error of the mean. z is equal to 51 minus 54 divided by standard error of the mean of 3, and we get negative 1. Negative 1. And now, again, we're looking at the tail of the distribution. So let's utilize our unit normal table to finish this problem. Okay, in our unit normal table, we enter it using the z-score of 1. The area in the tail is 0.1. 587. Okay, so the value that we found, so again, this can be rewritten up here. Um, it's the equivalent of saying the probability of obtaining a z score uh, less than negative 1.00. And we just found the proportion of the distribution in that area, which is equal to 0.1587 or there's a 15.887% chance that if we randomly selected a sample of n equal 4 from this distribution, that that sample mean would be less than 51. All right, similar here in this um, 15c, the only difference that we note is that n is equal to 36. So again, reemphasizing the relationship between increasing sample size and standard error and the results on our z-score. So we've learned that as n increases, standard error decreases and our z-scores increase. Very important to recognize that relationship. All right, so we have um, probability, still probability of obtaining a sample mean less than 51. So same distribution. We have 54 here. We have a school, uh, sample mean of 51. Again, less than is identified, so it's still the tail. So standard error of the mean is going to change because our sample size has changed. So standard error of the mean is equal to 6 over the square root of 36. So we have standard error of the mean equal to 6 over 6, and we get the standard error of the mean equal to 1. So our z is equal to, I'm going to just move that down a little bit, z is equal to m minus mu divided by standard error, 
z is equal to 51 minus 54, divide by 1, and now we get negative 3, a very extreme z-score. And again, that resulted from the fact that we increased sample size from 4 to 36. So this becomes the probability statement relating to the z-score less than negative 3. And before we even utilize our unit normal table, you should get the sense that this value, this proportion of the whole, this part of the whole, will be very small because negative 3 standard error units from the mean is very far from the mean, illustrating that the probability is quite low. Okay, so here's our distribution, our normal unit normal table. So 3 is the z-score. That's how we enter the distribution uh, or the table. And the area in the tail is the area of interest, and that's 0 0.0013. Okay, so what we found was that the answer is 0 0.0013, or there is a 0.13% chance that if we randomly selected a sample equal to 36, that that sample average would be less than 51. Okay, number 17. For a random sample of size n equals to 25, selected from a normal distribution with a mean of 15, a standard deviation equal to 20, find each of the following. So the range of sample means that define the middle of the distribution of sample means. So here, we're, we're solving for m. So I'm going to write our equation here. m is equal to the mu, oops, excuse me, mu plus the standard error of the mean multiplied by the z-score. Because again, what we want to find out, different from what we've done in the previous examples, is instead of finding the proportion or probability under the normal curve, here we want to identify what m is equal to that defines the middle 95% of scores. So let me first begin by drawing our distribution. Our distribution looks like this, where we have the mean in the center. And if, and I'm going to move that down just a tad so that I give myself enough room. So let's try that again. So the mean in the center, in the distribution, we have a mean in the center of 50. And we want to partition off 95% of the distribution in the center, 95%. Now, our unit normal table does not have a section that um, is illustrated um, as I have drawn here. So instead, we'll have to approach it as a way of finding the area between the mean and the z here and the area between the mean and the z there. Or we can consider, which might be a little easier, um, if 95% in the center, right, of all the scores are in the center, what's left is 5%, and we have to split that 5% in half because we have two tails. So essentially we're looking for the values that have 5%, excuse me, 2.5% chance of occurring um, in the tails, 0.5. So I'm um, going to retract this part um, just so... I'll just use one method, whoops. We're going to use this method of identifying what's in the tail. So again, we have 95% of scores in the center. We have two and a half on either side in the tail. Again, that is coming from the fact that if we have 95 in the center, that means we have 5% left over to make 100, so we split that in half, two and a half on either side. And so what I recommend that you do is first convert that two and a half percent into a proportion. And again, recognizing that this is the tail that we're working with. Um, so 2.5 by percent converted to a proportion. Okay, so if we want to convert the 2.5 into a proportion, simply 2.5 divided by 100, and we get 0 0.025. And I'm going to add a zero because that's the format used in our unit normal table. 
Okay, so we've identified the proportion, which is equal to the percentage of two and a half. And um, next, what we want to do is identify the, the values that we're solving for. So again, I want to find out what, what is m equal to here, and what is m equal to here that defines the middle 95% of the distribution. So I'm going to use this 0 0.025 from the tail, right, because that's where that 2.5% came from, which is a proportion of 0.025. I'm going to utilize the unit normal table, entering it with the tail column, and then reporting the z value, because again, in our equation, we're solving for m. So m is equal to the mu, the mu is 50, plus our standard error, which we need to calculate, and then multiplied by our z-score. So we have missing values, the standard error of the mean and our z-score. So let's figure out our standard error of the mean, which is our standard deviation equal to 20 in this case, over the square root of our sample, and our sample size is equal to 25. So we have 20 over 5, which gives us a value of 4. So standard error of 4, so we can replace that value here. And the next thing that's missing is the z-score. And I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. So the z-score is what's missing. Now because I'm solving for m on either side of the mean, I should recognize that I'm going to use both versions of that z value. So the um, positive version and the negative version because again, the, the values that we're solving for reside above and below the mean. I'm going to take a moment to just uh, clean this up a little bit just so you can see this better um, before we enter the unit normal table. So again, all I did was convert 2.5 divided by 100 and that gave me the proportion of 0 0.0250. Okay, so we're going to use that to enter the, t the um, unit normal table using the tail and find out what our z-score is equal to. So here's our unit normal table. Again, I'm utilizing the tail, looking for 0 0.0250. So I'm just going to look down here, and I'm getting closer, and I find it here. And um, so 0 0.025, and it has a corresponding z-score. So z, this is the objective here, find the z-score. So it's going to be positive negative 1.96, positive negative because I'm solving for a value above and below the mean. So now that we found our z-score, it's 1.96. Now we can solve for m um, for the value above the mean. It should equal, again, 4 times 1.96 positive added to 50. We should get 57.84. And that's this mean over here. So this mean. is now understood to equal 57.84. And then the other mean, right, again, that was using negative, a positive 1.96. Using the negative version, we should get a um, value mean of 42.16. Again, 4 times negative 1.96 added to 50 gives us a sample mean equal to 42, 42.16. So what we've done is identified the exact sample mean values that partition the distribution off where 95% of the scores are within these two values. So in other words, you can think of it as if you were to randomly select a sample from this distribution with the sample size equal to 25, there's a 95% chance that the sample average you select will range from a score of a sample mean of 42.16 to 57.84. So that's what we've solved is we identified the range of sample means that defines the middle 95% of the distribution. 
The next example is, is similar. We're going to draw our distribution instead of the values, the sample means that define the middle 95, we're going to concentrate on the middle 99% of the distribution. So what that means is that I have 1% difference and I need to split that in half. Split that in half so that I have the remaining remaining difference of 1% equally distributed on both sides of the distribution or both tails. Okay, so similar to what we did with the 5%, again we split it in half and then express it as a proportion. So half of 1 would be 0.5 and then express as a proportion it would be 0.005. Point zero zero five. Um, to follow the steps that I used in the previous example, let me take one step back. So let me just erase that so that it looks like the previous example. I'm skipping, jumping ahead slightly. So again, if half of 1% would be 0.5% here and 0.5% here, and now we want to convert that 0.5% into a proportion so it becomes 0.5 divided by 100. So here now making sure that you see all the steps and we get a proportion of 0 0.0050. Okay, so again recognizing 99% in the center, 1% in the tails. There are two tails, so we take that 1% divide it by 2, we get half a percent in each tail, convert that half of a percent to a proportion, and this is what we get, um, 0 0.0050. We're going to use that to um, find what our z-score is equal to. Now our standard error um, of the mean does not change um, because we have not changed any change on the sample size or standard deviation. So our standard error is still the same as our previous example of 4. So now what we're tasked with doing is solving for m. So again, m is equal to our mean of the population, 50, plus our standard error of the mean, which is 4, multiplied by our z-score. And again, it's going to be the positive and negative version of the z-score that corresponds to 0 0.0050 in the tail. So let's utilize our unit normal table to find out what that value is equal to. Okay, so we're going to enter the distribution using column C, which is the tail. And what I'm looking for is 0 0.05, excuse me, 0 0.005, or the closest thing to it. So I'm coming down here, and I find these values. Um, and one rule of thumb is that when you're looking for a particular value, try to select the, the value that's lower than the value you're looking for. So again, we're looking for 0 0.0050. And we see here that these two values that have z-scores of 2.57, 2.58, right, are equal distance from the value that I'm looking for. So um, again, rule of thumb is go with the lower value. And the reason for that so that's a z-score of 2.58. The rationale is that you want to find um, a z-score that's most conservative. Conservative defined as values further out in the in tail. And this will make more sense as we learn about alpha levels. So again, if you have two values at our equal distance from the proportion you're looking for, select the proportion that is on the lower end, so below. Um, so again, what this yields is a z-score of 2.58. Again, it's going to be positive and negative because we're solving for values above and below the mean. Okay, so we found that it's 2.58. And now we're going to solve for m using the positive version first. So 4 times 2.58 added to 50 should give us a mean of 60.32. So 60.32, and then M, sample mean um, on the lower end, below the mean, we would solve that using 4 multiplied by negative 2.58 and add it to 50, and you should get 39.68 to 39.
point 68. And what we've done now is identified the range of sample means that frame the middle 99% of, of sample averages. Or we can think of it in this other way. What we have just calculated is that 99% of the chance that if you select a sample equal to 25, that the sample mean will fall within this range of 39.68 to 60.32. This is an interesting example number 19. At the end of the spring semester, the Dean of Students sent a survey to the entire freshman class. One question asked the students how much weight they had gained or lost since the beginning of the school year. The average was a gain of 9 pounds with a standard deviation of 6 pounds. The distribution of scores was, um, was approximately normal. A sample of four students is selected and the average weight change is computed for the sample. So what is the probability that the sample mean will be greater than 10 pounds? So in other words, if we were to randomly select four students, four freshman students, and we calculated their average weight loss, um, in this, or weight gain, again, it would be the, the difference between the two, um, what is the probability that the average would be 10 pounds in weight gain or greater? So again, our probability statement here, what's the probability of sample average greater than 10 pounds um, of weight gain? So let's um, draw our distribution. In the center we have an average weight gain of 9 pounds. 9 pounds. And we want to identify the probability of sample means above 10. So we're going to shade this area. That is what we refer to as the tail. And we're going to need to convert that z-score, excuse me, that um, sample mean into a z-score. But before we can do so, we need to calculate our standard error of the mean. Replace variable standard error of the mean is equal to 6 pounds over the square root of 4. So our standard error of the mean is equal to 6 divided by 2, and we get 3. Now we can calculate our z-score. z is equal to m minus mu divided by standard error. z is equal to 10 pounds on average minus 9 over the standard error of the mean. So our z-score would be 10 minus 9 divided by 3, and we get 0.33, so we can place that over here. So 10 pound weight gain is 0.33 standard error units above the mean. And we're going to use our um, unit normal table to solve this question. What is the probability of obtaining the sample mean of 10 pounds, greater than 10 pounds of weight loss, which is the same as the probability of a z-score greater than 0.33. Since it's not even one standard error unit above the mean, we should expect something um, not too, um, actually we would expect something quite large, close to 0.5, um, because it is this value, the sample average of 10, is quite close to the population average of 9. Okay, so we're going to use their z-score of 0.33, and here it is, and we're going to find the area in the tail. 0.3707. So what we found was 0.3707, or it can be expressed as a 37.0% chance that if we randomly selected four freshman students and asked them um, what their average weight gain was, we would find that 37.07% of the time that average would be greater than 10 pounds. Okay, B says um, we're still working with the same parameters, and now we're interested in, um, again, this, let me make a little correction in the previous one, this should have said 9, I'm not sure what I did there. And here we have the average weight gain of 9 pounds, and here we're considering what's the probability of all the possible samples, what proportion will show an average weight loss? So again, 0 um, pounds would indicate no weight change, and anything less than zero would indicate weight loss, so um, a negative value. So in symbols, what is um, the probability of obtaining sample average less than zero? Again, less than zero would mean 
they actually on average had weight loss weight loss so zero would be no weight change less than zero weight loss all right so we're going to again recognize that um, the weight loss right is represented by something less than zero again this we're talking about change in weight and we're going to calculate our z-score our z-score but first we need to calculate our standard error of the mean so um, similar to above it didn't change because we didn't change sample size so we have six representing our standard error um, square root of n which is four standard error of the mean is equal to six divided by two and we get three calculate our z-score so z is equal to m minus mu divided by standard error z is equal to our score of zero which means no weight weight change um, minus the average weight gain of nine pounds divided by standard error of three in this case we get negative three as our z-score and as you can imagine that's a very extreme score and the probability of obtaining that score is probably pretty small so we're going to rewrite our probability statement over here a sample probability of obtaining a sample average less than zero which is equal to probability of obtaining a z-score less than negative 3.00 so let's use our unit normal table to finish this problem so we're looking for a z-score of 3 and here it is and the area of interest would be represented by the tail which is 0 0.0013 okay so the proportion is equal to 0 0.0013 or as a percentage there's a 0.13 percent chance that if we randomly selected we randomly selected a sample of four freshmen um, they would have weight loss um, instead of weight gain after the first freshman year so again there's only a 0.13 percent chance that if we randomly selected a sample for freshman students their average weight loss um, would be something less than zero meaning that they lost weight on average versus no weight change or weight gain Okay, using the same information now we're interested in what is the probability of finding a sample average or what is the possibility of finding a sample average of four students for freshman students that um, have weight change um, between nine pounds and twelve pounds Okay, so again the average weight loss is nine pounds um, given our probability statement and what it says here what is the probability that a sample mean will be a gain between nine and twelve pounds so between probability of a sample mean right that is greater than nine yet less than twelve so greater than nine less than twelve twelve is greater here and this is the area of interest right so it's the probability of a sample mean falling within that range all right so what we need to do is um, calculate our standard error of the mean again um, not seeing any change based on our previous examples so standard error of the mean is still equal to standard error standard deviation of six divided by the square root of four and we get six over two is equal to three and next we are going to calculate our z-score again what we're trying to do is calculate um, the z-score for 12 so z is equal to 12 minus 9 divided by 3 and we get positive 1 so this is positive 1 and for some of you may already have resorted this value um, to your bank of knowledge again recognizing that the middle um, portion of a distribution one standard deviation unit above and below is 68.26 percent so half of that would be the 0 0.3413 0 0.3413 that just comes from our, our understanding of one standard deviation unit above and below but let's just affirm that using our unit normal table just to make sure before I do that um, this area that I shaded we refer to as 
the area area between the mean and z-score. Okay, so we're going to enter the table using our z-score of 1 and report the area between the mean and z. And again, as I had indicated, it's 0.3413. So again, rewriting our probability statement. Again, probability of obtaining a sample average, right? that is greater than 9. I just wrote this. Um, you may not have seen it. It's a probability of, of a sample average that is less than 9, greater than 12, is the same as um, the probability of a z-score, a z-score that is greater than 0 and less than one and we just solved that by looking at the unit normal table and we found that it's 0.3413 or that's the proportion of the distribution that falls within that range or also understood that there's a 34.13% chance that if we randomly selected a sample of four freshman students their weight gain would range between 9 pounds and 12 pounds. The average age, number 21, the average age for licensed drivers in the country is 40.3 years with a standard deviation of 13.2. A researcher obtained a random sample of 16 parking tickets and computed an average age of 38.9 for the drivers. Compute the z-score for the sample mean and find the probability of obtaining an average age this young or younger for a random sample of licensed drivers. Is it reasonable to con conclude that this set of 16 is a res representative sample of licensed drivers? Okay, so okay, so we're going to begin with our sketch of our distribution. We have the average age of drivers in the country um, at 40.3. Standard deviation is 13.2, and we want to consider, um, again, if this sample of 16 people that had parking tickets, their average age was 38.9, so I'll place 38.9, um, and we want to determine the probability of um, selecting this a group of individuals um, that have received parking tickets um, that have an age of 38.9 or less. So again, trying to determine if it's reasonable to conclude that this set of 16 people is representative of all licensed drivers. So we're going to, again, recognize that the area we want to shade is to the left because of the verbiage that says this young or younger. So what's the probability of finding a sample of individuals who have received parking tickets that their average age would be 38.9 or less. So again, our probability of finding a sample average of 38.9 of m less than 38.9. And in order to figure this out, we're going to need to calculate our z-score. And before we can do so, we're first going to need to calculate our standard error of the mean. So standard error of the mean is equal to standard deviation over square root of n. Standard error of the mean is equal to 13.2 divided by the square root of 16. Standard error of the mean is equal to 13.2 over 4. And the standard error of the mean is equal to 3.3. Okay, so we've established what our standard error of the mean is equal to. And now we can use that value to calculate our z-score, converting 38.9 into a z-score. So z is equal to m minus mu divided by standard error of the mean. z is equal to... 38.9 minus 40.3 divided by 3.3. My z-score is equal to 
negative 0.42. Okay, so negative 0.42. And now we're going to figure out the probability. Again, this is the same as saying what is the probability of obtaining a z-score that's less than negative 0.42. So we're going to use the tail, tail of the distribution to figure out that probability or that proportion. Okay, so we're looking for the z-score 0.42 and here it is. And again, the area in the tail is the area or the proportion we're interested in that's represented by 0.3372. Okay, so now we have the value from our unit normal table. I'm just going to give myself a little more room here and erase this equation and conclude that the probability of obtaining um, a sample of 16 individuals from those who have received parking tickets having an age of 38.9 or less, the proportion of the population is equal to 0.3372 or there's a 33.72% chance that if we randomly selected 16 individuals that have received parking tickets, their average age would fall at 38.9 or less. And we are also asked with determining if this is a represent, representative sample of licensed drivers. Since this z-score is less than one standard deviation unit below the mean, then we would conclude that yes, it is representative. The sample is representative because it's a centrally located score. It's not even one standard deviation unit below the mean. Again, just um, indicating essentially that those who receive parking tickets tend to be close to the average age of a driver in this country. Okay, last one, 23. Researchers conducted a research study demonstrating that eight-month-old infants appear to recognize which samples are likely to be obtained from a population which are not. In the study, the infants watched as a sample of five ping pong balls was selected from a large box. In one condition, the sample consisted of one red ball and four white balls. After the sample was selected, the front panel of the box was removed to reveal the content. In the expected condition, the box contained primarily white balls like the sample, and the infants looked at it for an average of 7.5 seconds. In the unexpected condition, the box had primarily red balls, unlike the sample, and the infants looked at it for 9.9 .9 seconds. The researchers interpreted the results as demonstrating that the infants found the unexpected result surprising and therefore more interesting than the expected result. Assuming that the standard error for both means is equal to 1 second, Draw a bar graph showing the two sample means using brackets to show the size of the standard error for each mean. Okay, so if we were drawing this as a bar graph, again, the independent variables or the conditions would be placed on the abscissa. And so we'll just say the expected category and the unexpected category. And on our Ordinate, we're just going to um, express, so these are the conditions on the abscissa, the independent variable, if you will, and the dependent variable is on the ordinate and expressed in time. So I'm just going to go in seconds um, by increments of 1. Okay, and then I'm going to take the first bar up to the mean of the expected category. So that was 7.5. And for the unexpected, it was 9.9, .9, almost 10. I'm going to run out of a little bit of room here, but we'll still be able to see um, the outcome here. And with a bar, I'm going to express the standard error unit. So it's um, 1 equal to 1, so that would take us to 8.5 and down to 6.5. So this would be 8.5 to 6.5 and do the same over here. And that would take us past 10 to 10.9 and 8.9. 
So again, I did run out a little room, but you still should be able to see uh, what we're doing here. So again, this ranges from 11.9 to from 8.9. And again, given this isn't really um, written to scale, we do see that as one ends, right, given the, the mean and the span um, from the mean of 1 from 8.5, and then the other one, the mean of 9.9, .9, going one unit above and one unit below, there is no numeric overlap. Um, so again, if there's no numeric overlap, that gives us an indication that that the conditions are different. The conditions are different. Had the values, the numeric values overlap, let's say this condition, the expected condition, went to eight point, um, let's say it went to nine, then we would see that there was overlap in the um, numeric values, the span around the mean. So again, this one ends, the expected condition ends at 8.5, considering the standard error or again, considering the one unit um, above and one unit below. And the other one ranges from 8.9 to 11.9. So there's no numeric value um, being overlapped, and therefore we would conclude that the conditions are statistically significantly different from each other. And I think I'm going to just redraw it one more time <laughs> in case um, that isn't clear. I know that the numbers overlapped visually, but numerically they don't. So let me just try that again. I should have um, given myself a little bit more room. But um, here we go again. So again, the independent variable is down on the abscissa. So we have the expected and we have the unexpected categories. And over here, we're going to go up in units of one. And the expected average was 7.5. And for the unexpected, it was 9.9. .9. And if we go one standard error unit down from 7.5, that takes us to 8.5 and 6.5. So again, this is 8.5, 6.5, and the mean is 7.5. And here we go down one, and that takes us to 8.9 all the way to 10.9. So again, the overlap is what I'm talking about here. This is 8.9, and this is 8.5. So since they don't overlap, then again, we conclude that they are different um, because that common region of one standard deviation or one standard error in this case above and below is different than the span for, for the unexpected and for the expected categories.